everyone. This is a two-part video lesson which covers waste management. Part 1 introduces solid waste generation and characterization of waste streams, and Part 2 covers landfill siting and design. Andy Long is the original author of this lesson. Support for the development of this video is given by the National Science Foundation through funding of the Board of Knowledge and the Science Classroom Project based at Ohio University. How would you define waste? A simple definition is that waste is a consequence of everyday life, of all creatures. You might also say that waste is an inevitable consequence of our modern society. Eventually, for every good purchase, part of it will become waste. In the United States, we are fortunate enough to be provided with waste disposal services which handle our garbage for us, meaning we don't have to worry about being suffocated in our own garbage. The flow of waste from your home may look a little something like this. You first buy groceries at the store. The things you don't use anymore become trash, and you toss them into a garbage can. You set the can out on the curb, and it gets picked up and hauled away by a garbage truck on a weekly basis. The garbage is either then taken to a transfer station, landfill, waste incinerator, or hazardous waste disposal site, depending on how your community disposes of garbage. Recyclables can either be collected separately or mixed together with the rest of your garbage. According to the EPA, the average person generates roughly 4.4 pounds of waste each day, 1.5 pounds of which gets composted. Going by this rate, 1,600 pounds of waste are generated by each person every year. That is nearly a ton of garbage per person. In 2013, Americans generated roughly 254 million tons of waste. The good news is that roughly 87 million tons of this waste was recycled, resulting in a reduction of 186 million tons of CO2 emissions each year. This is actually comparable to removing 39 million cars off the road. Looking at the things you throw away, solid waste comes in many different shapes, sizes, and compositions. The waste stream you should be most familiar with is municipal solid waste. Municipal solid waste is any waste generated by residential and commercial entities. This waste is predominantly composed of decomposable materials. Other common waste streams include inert materials like earth fill and rock, agricultural waste like animal and food waste, water and wastewater sludge, hazardous waste like spent radioactive materials, medical wastes like needles and items contaminated with human blood, industrial wastes like chemical solvent, solvents and useless byproducts, and mining wastes. Municipal solid waste is a complex amalgam of all mixed household wastes. A breakdown of the United States municipal waste stream is shown in the pie chart. Think about all of the diverse waste products you throw into the trash or recycling bin. The components of municipal solid waste are commonly characterized into several broad categories. You have recyclables like metal, plastic, paper, and glass, food wastes like eggshells and food scraps, household hazardous wastes like batteries and cleaners, yard wastes like wood and pulled weeds, bulkier items like appliances and rugs, and construction wastes like drywall. The main driving point here is that municipal waste is incredibly diverse. These characterizations are necessary for those people who handle your waste. One obvious benefit of waste characterization is that it allows for easier separation of specific wastes from the waste stream. In this way, they can be handled and disposed of properly. While food waste can decompose in a landfill, recyclable items can be reclaimed and repurposed for other uses. This frees up space in the landfill so that other items can take their place. So in what other ways can we characterize waste to streamline the waste disposal process? In particular, when designing a landfill, we are most interested in composition by identification, moisture content, chemical com composition, heat values, biodegradability, and physical characteristics like density and particle size. Composition determination methods are simple methods used to determine the amount of waste in each broad category. These include the input-output method, manual sampling, and photogrammetry. The input-output method uses published data from industries to estimate waste compositions. 
flows of raw goods and products to the consumer gives a general picture of the eventual waste produced from these items. Manual sampling uses the waste from garbage trucks to characterize the municipal waste stream. A number of garbage trucks are randomly selected and a portion of their contents are sampled and characterized. These characterizations are then aggregated and extrapolated to the entire population. Finally, photogrammetry is as simple as taking a picture and analyzing its waste components. Upon analysis, assumptions and approximations must be made on the weight and identity of the components in the picture. Moisture content is the measure of the amount of water in a given substance. We are interested in the moisture content of municipal waste because it adds additional weight to the waste stream, aids in bacterial decomposition of waste in a landfill, and over time it leaches out of landfills in a toxic stream called leachate. In order to estimate the moisture content of a waste stream into the landfill, we use the approximated moisture content of each component that we found before in our composition determination methods. Food waste, for example, is approximately 70% water by weight. To calculate the moisture content of an item as a percentage, you take the difference between the wet and dry weights and divide by the wet weight. Information on the chemical composition of municipal solid waste is most useful for resource recovery, where the solid waste will be used as a fuel for energy generation or to make compost. Municipal solid waste is rich in organic material, which makes it easily combustible and useful as a source of steam energy. Using calorimetry, the heat values for different waste components can be used to determine the potential energy generation of a waste stream. Finally, Biodegradability describes the tendency of waste components to be decomposed by microorganisms. Waste which is high in volatile organic matter, such as food waste and certain paper products, is much more susceptible to biodegradation than other types of waste. These wastes are reduced in volume in landfills by resident bacteria, fungi, and yeast, which excrete extracellular enzymes to help metabolize the organic matter. During this process, Solid waste is transformed in part through gaseous components like methane and carbon dioxide. In a landfill, biodegradation helps to reduce waste volume and weight and stabilizes the waste material. If a gas collection system is built into a landfill, methane can be captured and used for on-site gener energy generation. Now that we know some of the physical characteristics of municipal solid waste, how can we get rid of it in the most sustainable way? Well, we have a few options. We could strap it on a rocket and send it to space, but this is far too costly. Dumping it in the ocean used to be a popular method, but this is now most certainly illegal and definitely unethical. Incineration is a solid option and generates usable energy, however it is a bit dirty and may only be useful for certain wastes. The most popular method by far is storing this waste underground in a landfill. Landfills are simply large holes in the ground where waste is dumped and eventually covered with soil. This method of disposal, as well as waste incineration and several others, is regulated under the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act of 1976. This legislation sets stringent guidelines on how to properly dispose of wastes, including minimum standards for the design of landfills. Although regulated by the government, most landfills are owned and operated by private owners. This marks the end of part one of this video lesson. Part two will introduce concepts associated with landfill siting and design. If you wish to learn more about landfills, watch the video in the link to take a virtual tour of a landfill. You may also check out the book's NIMBY video to learn about the socioeconomic impacts of waste handling facilities. Thank you for watching.